Good YouTube land. So Titans Return is almost over. On the whole, I can say it's been very enjoyable. The range of classic characters is very nice. But there aren't very many toy releases left, at least in the deluxe range. And here I am, the poorly Canadian toy reviewer, still looking for a Blitzwing and Octane, also known as Oct One. But Screw all that. Let's take you all the way back to Wave 1 and one of the toys I honestly didn't want to get, but am um, thankful I did get now. Just got now. It's Hardhead. So, here we have to take a look at the packaging. Titans Return, Foolus, and Hardhead. You got the figure right there, his accessories. A nice picture of, his, of him in mid-decapitation. Right there. Here on the side, nothing. On uh, this side, that same piece of artwork. On the back, the obligatory product shots in one step, and where the head, the Titan Master fits, and vehicle to robot. I believe Bio Furos gives Hard Head a regenerative healing power, so now he's Wolverine apparently, or Deadpool, whichever. He's the tank without a mouth. And the cross L with loud mouth. I never got a blur. I still have to get a blur. I would rather get the uh, Jap the, the Takara release blur because the color scheme is a lot more varied. It generally looks better. Uh, Sentinel Prime, don't want. Have Astro Train. And I never picked up either Blaster or Soundwave. Uh, so far, the only leader I've picked up is Six Shot who's somewhere else. But, yeah. This is one of the guys who showed up in both the uh, American G1 cartoon and the Headmasters cartoon with different explanations in both cartoons. So in G1 cartoon, uh, a bunch of the uh, Autobots landed on a planet Nebulos and decided to become Headmasters, so they're they're, the Nebulans combined with them. And this guy's headmaster was originally, co was, ori wow, was originally called Duros. So, there's a little bit of trivia. And the headmaster cartoon, apparently it was the, uh, the little heads were, their char were characters themselves, were basically a splinter group who didn't want to fight, but they created... Uh, armor, giant armor suits that they learn to control and learn to force them to transform. So, you get two completely different origins for Headmasters, and this guy, Hardhead, was in both of them. And by the bio, it made him sound a little bit <laughs> hilariously, like, Hardhead is literally his personality. He will not follow any path other than his own. But, and his path is fighting. So, that's all I'm going to get him open, and we're going to take a look. And it's raining, if you can hear it. So here is Hardhead, in his vehicle mode. going to take a look at the collector's card first. Same piece of artwork. Instruction manual. Yeah. So Hardhead is a tank. Tank. He's a Cybertronian tank, so he doesn't have to look like any actual tank you've ever seen. And, for what he is, he looks really good. I do like the massive lump of green in the middle, surrounded by four black tank treads. Also, we've got a massive weapon 
mounted by a slightly smaller weapon, and it does actually have articulation. There's two hinges, so you can go that, and you can swivel. It can do a, you can do a that. And hilariously, his head port, his Titan Master connection, is still unimpeded in this mode. So you could literally transform him without removing the head, or you can do some silly stuff, like take Furos, and just, uh, come on. He can have 2001 era visible head syndrome, although it would be back here. It would be like, it would be like that. There, you have mid-2000s visible head syndrome. So we'll take this guy off to the side and talk about him in a bit. Uh, Detail-wise, there's not a lot. You do have a lot of molded in detail, like this kind of, I don't know, mold, a lot of molded in detail right around his neck. Nice bit of beige paint right here, which we'll talk about in robot mode. Some venting on his bits. I don't want to spoil. A little bit of black here. He's got the trifecta Autobot symbols. He has like the Triforce or something. I don't know. Some nice uh, molded in tank details right here. Along with the three rolly wheels. Which actually do roll slightly well. Like not bad rolling. And then we come all the way to his gun, which is kind of a hollowed out generic rifle with a butt. But it's just cast in solid green to, marry, to mirror his G1 rifles, which were green. And you've got this giant beige destroyer, which unfortunately can't really fire a missile, even though it does have an open barrel. And it does have a dual hinged back piece so you can open it up and stick a target titan master excuse me inside no the uh, the repaint of this guy this guy got repainted in wave 4 into quake who is a g1 twin target master he had two guns which unfortunately the titan's return figure did not uh, come with hey <laughs> give me a second hey <laughs> Ah, excuse me. I'm not cutting that out. But yeah, you can stick... Oh, I was talking about Quake for a second. And it's kind of a shame that the Titans Return Quake didn't come with the dual Target Masters. Because I have uh, Scoop over there, and he has dual Target Masters. So, like, they have the molds for more Target Masters, except... The line, the gimmick in this line is Titan Masters, so they didn't fit in a second gimmick. Although I'm hoping for a Takara release, because what Takara is doing right now is releasing all the uh, Headmaster molds, like Hot Rod and Cup, but they're releasing them with their Target Masters. So I'm hoping when they get to Quake, they actually do give him the dual, or maybe even one Target Master. That would be nice. That I'll probably pick up that maybe so you have that you do have also multiple count them four one two three four point uh plugs for a titan master's feet so you have one there one there it's really raining outside right now and one there and uh one there. And hilariously, you do have two more, actually. If you open this back piece up again, you have two Titan Master pegs right there. So you could peg them in there, although it's really loose. You can peg them in kind of... Come on. Yeah. Oh, well, no. They're slightly too big to actually fit. It's hilariously. But you do have extra pegs right there for some reason. Let me just... Yeah, there, he doesn't actually stand up very well on those. 
So, you do have this nice giant orange canopy, which has a spot right in there for a Target Master's Titan Master. Why can't I say that? I don't, why I can't say that, I don't know. But yeah, he sits comfortably, comfortably right there with some nice venting detail. And the underside, you can kind of see a little bit of what's going on. You can see his thighs, unfortunately. But, wow, I'll be right back. Now that the rain has died down, I almost forgot to do all my comparisons, but I did also notice that the platform right here is on a on a metal rod. It has a little bit of wiggle room. Right there, you can slide it back and forth. Not much, but it's interesting, I guess. <laughs> I, I don't know. So, for comparison, here we have Generations Warpath. I do really hope they repaint this guy into Warpath, because that would be really cool, like a uh, third-party company, I don't know, does maybe a War Within, War Within Path. That'd be cool. Also, here we have Deluxe Tank Ore from the Generations line. Deluxe FOC WFC Megatron. Probably one of my favorite tank formers. And for Voyager class, we have Dark of the Moon, Shockwave. Dotima, Shockwave. One of my favorite toys when I first got back into collecting Transformers. And we can also show him with his Headmaster Pal, Highbrow. So there you go. Now we shall get down to Transformation! So we, shall, we can leave the cannon on. But just so you see everything clear, I'm going to remove it. You can see the panel it's on. So we're going to unpeg the arms from right here. These part of the tank treads. We can unpeg the legs slightly. And then we're going to basically triple accordion. So we're going to bring this. Is it unpegged? You have to unpeg that. Bring this all the way down. And I just spun his rifle way out of the... Where did it go? accordion so then we fold this panel down and this back panel down fold the crotch panel up uh, from where the legs are fold them down and make sure they click in a pace place fold the foot down make sure it soft clicks right into there do the same thing on the other side fold that Pull that down. Now he's got things to walk around on. For the arms, you're going to double hinge them forward and a little bit backwards so they look like that. Come to the inside of his forearm. Fold out his hand. Do the same thing on the other side. And now we have a body without a head. So what we can do is put this panel all the way up here, and we can pull out Furos, aka Duros, and take a look, take a proper look at him. He's a little green dude with a gray body, and he actually has a green face. He's kind of like a little hardhead, and he's got tank tracks kind of molded into his legs. I'm pretty sure that's the idea behind the Headmaster's cartoon. But just double him over and you have a hard head head with the blue visor and the yellow mouth plate, which I don't know what it's accurate to. This might be accurate to the toy, the G1 hard head toy because in the cartoon from all the pictures I saw, he had a working mouth. He did not have a faceplate, but 
Otherwise, the color placement looks spot on, and it's hilarious. He has a gr the back chunk of his head is green. So you can plug him on using the regular, and this is a bit loose, so if you prefer, you can flip it around like that and plug it in, and the connection is a bit more secure. Raise up the camera a little, and we can put this on his shoulder, and I'll give him his rifle in his hand and demonstrate posability already. You can also just leave this down if you want. It does nicely fold against the flat of his back. Hugs tightly. But I think all the iconic pictures of Hardhead have it over his shoulder. So there's Hardhead in his robot mode. And it does look like a very good generic robot mode. As I, <laughs> That's the best way I've heard it described as it. Looks like a robot. So, come in again on the head. He's got an Autobot insignia that's migrated now to each shoulder. He just a uh, what was that word? He does have this paint app, which is a uh, harken back to his G1 tech specs flap, but now it's just become a token throwback paint app. But it does look accurate. Very nicely, he doesn't. His third Autobot signal is right there. Sigil. It's not a signal. It's not the bat signal. I love the gross, unnecessary paint on his crotch. Like, you've got silver, you've got black, you've got red, you've got yellow. Like, they went all out just to color it his crotch. Which is hilarious. Because this is the only time you ever see it. Because in vehicle mode, it's... Can I get it? I think it's... No, uh, it's not stuck, but... It's, uh, come on, there. It's folded up like that. That's the only indication you get in tank mode. So, all that unnecessary paint for, I guess it's accurate, I'm not sure. Again, I'm not a huge G1, er, he's got green hands, which seems kind of weird. I assume it's accurate. I've only looked at still photos. And he's got his little rolling blood red translucent wheels on the front of his legs. Oh, he could have done probably well without the beige thighs. That would have it would have been nice if these were one solid color cuz I don't know what kind of uh clothes that is, but none that I want to wear. Like he's got the gunmetal gray th uh, hips and shins but random beige thighs. I don't. Overall, looks good. Very clean. All you've got is a uh, tank cockpit on his back. Not like barely any kibble. You wouldn't call that kibble because that kind of looks awesome. But yeah, and he's got this gigantic cannon on his shoulder, which is iconically hardhead. Apparently, if it was in his belly, I'd call him Warpath, which is kind of why I want. This guy repainted in a warpath. And even tank war. Because this thing. Lord knows. This guy looking like that. That thing. Getting to it more in comparison. But this this shoulder mounted rocket launcher is terrible. But, uh, yeah articulation wise. Now his head is on a ball joint. You do have wiggle. You'd have forward and backwards. Not really. You don't get a lot because you have to kind of unpeg his head a little bit and then you can see the tiny face in there to get more motion. But it can go 360 if you take the cannon out of the way. Shoulders are on a ball joint. They don't get... They do get a full forward and backward range. Not a lot of butterfly. Or actually, that is quite a bit of butterfly, but... To go f upward, you have this secondary joint, so you can go all the way there. His elbows are almost dual hinged, but don't really get much more room than, say, 95 degrees. 
or just flat straight 90 because up oh, there you go that's something but he's got a swivel right up right at the elbow for like a faux bicep swivel and he's got yeah quite a decent range of elbow his hand does actually have a joint it's very tight like some of the tolerances on this guy are a bit too tight like this wrist swivel and he does have this inward joint for transformation it's got to be said though his arms are a bit too lanky like I get what they're going for with the transformation that that might be the only way to do it but he's looking a bit grillery but when is that a bad thing in my opinion I don't know uh, nothing at the waist due to how he transforms he does again have the crotch uh, hinge his rifle he can hold he can look decently you can have him hold both weapons if you want, but it kind of, the elbows aren't strong enough, so it goes, mm -hmm. so you kind of have to, like, make sure, like, he can't really, okay, he can kind of hold it forward, but not very well, you might want to just, just do that, get back, his hips are on ball joints, nice range of motion, and go all the way that way with the cut right there he does have a ri ridiculously tight thigh swivel which actually constantly comes unpegged from its mushroom peg let's see on the other side not as bad not as tight but this one needs to be worked a bit and for knees he's got 90 degree knee bend very nice you do have this inward joint if you want and nothing really at the toe it locks into place right there I just bumped the camera I apologize and unfortunately nothing for heel spur so it's kinda he's notoriously hard to balance with his lack of heel spurs but, uh, yeah overall I don't know why I decided to skip out on this guy other than I had no idea who he was at the time like I was like I picked up Scourge because I'd, I'd heard of Scourge at least I'd heard that name Highbrow okay I've seen Thew's videos I know who Highbrow is like this guy he kind of hit a he hit the I don't know who that is but now I picked him up and I'm kind of glad I did although I picked him up for more than I think he's worth. I picked him up for twenty four ninety nine. So, yeah. If you're gonna get him, be wary of markup. But uh, now for comparison. So again, for comparison, here he is with his buddy Highbrow. Hi, Thew. Wait, I'm not Thew. Damn it. <laughs> that joke doesn't work. Here he is with Megatron. Here he is with Tankor. And you can kind of see why I would like the Titans Return Tankor out of this mold. Because, like, over the shoulder cannon, like, tank treads become the legs. Like, it, it looks like a good kind of work. Maybe. Uh, here he is with Warpath. What did I... How did I do so wrong? What did I do to you, Warpath? Yeah. Again, shoulder cannon. Head flop right there. Tank treads become the arms and legs. Don't know why they didn't do this. But they did Quake instead. G1 Quake. And I... Uh, I completely forgot about... Shockwave, so I have to quickly fill the void of time that I would just pause the video, but now I pause it too much, and it's going to break up and real feel, feel all choppy like, so I'm just going to transform my shockwave while I'm blabbering to a camera. 
blabbering like a dick ball. A <laughs> dick ball. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Maybe I should do that uh, 10 shots, 10 bots kind of video, you know? Where you you get drunk while reviewing toys. That sounds like a good time. Here he is with Dark of the Moon Shockwave. Still one of my favorite movie toys. There you go. So, overall on Hardhead, yeah, I like them. I can kind of see why Titans Return started with this guy. Like, he's definitely the most solid of the Wave 1. Because, like, Highbrow's neck is crappy. Although, I'm not sure if Highbrow was actually Wave 1. And what else he had, uh, Skull Smasher, who's legs are wobbly as hell, and Scourge, who is alright, but there was a much better Scourge already on the market. So, overall, I definitely think this guy is the best toy from Wave 1, at least at the deluxe price point. And also, he makes a pretty good Quake in red uh, maroon de gray. Uh, maroon blue and gray. Whatever color. Maroon de gray! But, uh, yeah, I'm rambling. I might as well wrap up. Definitely. Solid Transformer. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. And until next time, keep it weird.